you are going to, to my office um, for the, the Send of African journalists. Uh, this a uh, news agent started by journalists living, were living in exile in South Africa. I was the bureau chief of the Standard Newspaper in Zimbabwe. That's the leading Sunday independent newspaper in the country. So these are some of the stories I was, uh, I was writing when I was still with the Standard. as a result of malnutrition. So the government didn't like, I mean, such kind of reporting. To them it was sort of uh, anti-government. I was beaten. I lost consciousness. I went to hospital. I got treated. They kept on coming, arresting me. No charges laid against me. So I decided, no, one day these people, they might kill you. So I ended up leaving the country. I left it. My child, by then, she was three days old. She doesn't know me right now because I'm now in exile. So I'm, I'm very, very much worried about that one. And I'm not enjoying myself here in South Africa. So I'm working strategies on how best can I can bring my family to South Africa. Because I'm no longer going back to Zimbabwe. place in the southeast of Zimbabwe, around about here on the Mozambique border near the Chimoni Moni National Parks. Twelve midnight, 200 armed military personnel surrounded my farm. Over the four years leading up to them taking my farm, two of my workers were shot and killed. Three of them, uh, the children, the young girls of my workers were raped. Um, I had more than 150 beasts slaughtered. Um, the most inhumane way um, and basically a, a long session of victimization. I used to employ 350 workers which meant that I housed 1,800 people um, and that farm today is totally derelict and everything is, is, um, is destroyed. In Parliament the Minister of Justice uh, accused me of being the progeny of thieves and murderers and I left my seat in Parliament and um, I snapped, of which I regret, and I pushed him. Most of the people in prison, the average age group, 25 years old, um, in prison for petty crimes of survival, um, stealing a chicken, stealing some groundnut, stealing some maize to live, that's the people that, that fill the prisons of Zimbabwe. The conditions are absolutely atrocious. I went into prison weighing 103 kilograms. I came out of prison weighing 77 kilograms. Um, in the prisons, there's one meal a day, there's no medical facilities, there's massive disease and death, and I'm sure they were hoping that I would die in prison. I was personally threatened with death, um, but we, we stood our ground. That's what God has called us to do, to make sure that we don't create invisible persons in our society. 4.5 million Zimbabweans actually here in South Africa. So, by way of those that have left as a direct consequence of the political crisis, we are be talking about uh, 3 million. The government of Robert Mugabe, the NPF government, has said, even when it comes to food, food in Zimbabwe is for those who support the government of the day. who are now living in South Africa, that alone is a crisis. It's a crisis. If there's anything I can lose, it's my life, but my life is insignificant. If there's anything I have to gain, it is the fulfillment of seeing people in Zimbabwe living a normal life. The fulfillment of seeing the youths in Zimbabwe 
having aspirations and hopes, working to create alternatives. If there's anything I have to gain, the satisfaction of knowing that my kids can go back and sit in our home in Harare, where they don't have to fear anything. I'm sure the world should, should rethink about what is happening in Zimbabwe. The world should help Zimbabwe.